Using Playgrounds is a great way to learn the Swift language or to experiment with new things because you can instantly see the results as you type rather than having to wait around to build and run the app. In this exercise, you'll create your first Swift Playground and you'll see how useful it can be to learn Swift and also in your day-to-day -day development to prototype code. Let's dive in. To create a new playground, open up Xcode and go to File, New, Playground. Select the iOS blank template and click Next. Give your playground a name, I'll just leave it at the default. Choose a location and click Create. Let's review the various parts of the playground editor. This main area right here is called the source editor. Basically, this is where you'll write your Swift code. It works the same way as when you were editing Swift files when you were working in Bullseye, except before you were working with multiple files in an Xcode project. But in a Swift playground, there's just one main file. Over here is the result sidebar. This is what makes Playground special and really cool, and it's very different from a normal Xcode editor in an Xcode project. Before, your code didn't run until you clicked a play button up here to see the results in the simulator. With Playgrounds, every time you add some code, the Playground will automatically run your code and show the result of each line over here in the results sidebar. This way, you can easily see how things are working right away. For example, this line here creates a string that says, hello Playground, and we can see the result over here on the right. Now note it's a little cut off, so there's two ways to see it. We can click the I button here for a quick look to see the full string, or if we wanna make it permanently show up, we can click this little box and it'll appear over here and we can resize this window to see it. So it's a really nice interactive way to see what you're doing. Now down here is the execution control. Swift Playgrounds execute automatically by default, meaning you can write code and immediately see the output. But this control allows you to execute the playground again if you want, or even stop the execution. You just hold down your button here and select between automatically run and manually run. Up here is the activity viewer. This shows the status of the playground. For example, right now it shows that the playground has finished executing and is ready to handle more code in the source editor. Now when the playground is executing, this viewer will indicate the status with the spinner. Like you can see if I change the value of the string to hello playground to hello swift. I'm going to save this file and you can see it switched briefly to running playground and then it went back to ready. These toggle switches show and hide three panels that appear on the left, the bottom, and the right. These panels display extra information that you may need to access from time to time. You'll usually keep them hidden, but they're there if you need them. Now let's try writing some code in our playground. Now pretend we're back working on Bullseye and working on that algorithm that calculated the difference between the slider's value. Wouldn't it have been nice to have a place where we could try out the code we're writing to make sure it works? Well, that's a perfect job for a playground. We could have written the second version of the algorithm in a playground like this. First, we'll make a variable to hold the current value of the slider. We'll pretend that the user has set it to 50. We'll also set a variable for the target value of the slider, you know, the random number. And just for testing purposes, we'll set it to 55. So we want to calculate the difference between these two values. So we can say the difference is current value minus target value. And you can see that we see the preview over here on the right that says, hey, wow, this is going to be a negative number in this case. So then we can write the if statement that we wrote before. If difference is less than zero, then what we want to say is difference equals difference times negative one. And check it out. Over on the side, we can see a preview that, hey, now the difference is five. And we can also do a print statement inside Playgrounds as well. So if you wanted to print the difference at the end, it brings up the lower panel right here. That's where the output comes out. And we see five is printed out right there. So now that I've prototyped this algorithm and verified that it works, I could test it with other values real easy. So say the target value was you know, a negative less than the, the current value instead, then nothing prints out here because it never goes inside the if statement, but it still works in the end. So now that I prototyped this code, I could basically copy this code, open up my Xcode project and paste it inside. I use Playgrounds for testing out code like this all the time because it's a great way to try things out and see the results instantly. In the next few sections of this course, we'll be using Swift Playgrounds to go a bit deeper into programming with Swift. This way, we can easily focus on the core concepts of Swift development, like functions or classes, without getting bogged down with buttons, sliders, and labels. Then, when we're done playing around, we'll get back to Swift development by creating your second app but this time you'll have a foundation of core knowledge to work with. Let's get started.